A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 72. Sorting out my parts department, plus cleaning and reprofiling the chimney. In this clip I'm measuring the total length of the boiler. I need to know what the size is because very shortly I will be wrapping the boiler in some heat insulation material and then cladding it in a piece of brass sheet. After I got the measurement I phoned Matt at Blackgates Engineering and ordered the parts. This morning something interesting arrived in the post. And here it is. Two feet of Teflon coated yarn. I bought this short length of braided yarn because I think for the moment it will be sufficient for my needs. The good thing about braided yarn, this is supposed to be one eighth of an inch braided yarn, is you can unpick it and get lots of yarn that is much thinner, very suitable for small steam engines. Modern graphited yarn, in my opinion, is no good at all and I just don't use it. But this stuff feels the same as the old graphited yarn used to feel when you got it out of a packet. And another bonus, as it's not graphited when you've unpicked the yarn, you don't have to wash all the graphite off your fingers. This package also arrived in the post this morning, and it's from Chris at CME Engineering. It's a bit like Christmas all over again. Inside this package are six quarter by 40 whistle valves. I only need one whistle valve for this job. The other five will go into my box of whistle valves and bits and pieces for future use. As I fit this whistle valve, I did not need to use a shim washer as I did on the previous one. It all depends where the threads start and finish. And now it's time for a bit of labelling. First of all, I'm labelling the whistle valves box and here it is. I've also put some Chinese whistle valves and whistles in the same box. Now, if I need a whistle valve or a small whistle, I know where they are. I have a really bad habit of finding things and putting them in a safe place, and then I lose them for quite a while. I even found a lot of water gauges I didn't even know that I'd bought. And I also found these, which I immediately lost after I bought them. They are M6 grub screws with a few nuts. The other day these arrived, two tins of nitromores, to continue removing the paint from the main bodywork of the engine. I'll wait until the weather warms up before I do this. Time now to look at the chimney. The chimney over the years has sustained some damage. Initially, as per usual, I put the chimney in a tub of cellulose thinners, which didn't remove the paint at all really. This paint's been on the chimney for a long time and it's well baked on. While my Proxon motor tool was fitted in the bench clamp, it seemed like a good idea to remove the paint by using this method. It didn't take long, and don't forget, as I mentioned in the previous episode, when using wire brushes in these small, fast and powerful motor tools, keep the speed low. That way the wire brush will last a lot longer and you won't get quite as many bristles thrown at you to high speed. And once again a health and safety warning, always wear eye protection when using things like this, they can be dangerous. The top cap is damaged, so I need to mount this in the lathe. Luckily I already had a piece of copper tubing with a plug in the end, perfect for the job. Using copper tubing as a mandrel is not a good idea because it's too soft, but if it has a brass plug inside it, you can get plenty of pressure on it to hold it tight in the chuck. This piece of brass tube with the plug in it was what was left over when I made the chimney for the Stuart 7A steam plant. I made the brass plug for the end with the centre in it to support it while machining using a live centre in the tailstock. Now what I have to do is carefully turn down the piece of copper tubing so that the chimney is a tight fit on it. Making a mandrel from a piece of copper tubing isn't good practice. A solid piece of metal would have been much better. But just for cleaning up the top cap of the chimney, I think this will be sufficient. I turned the copper tube to be a tight fit in the chimney, but it was a bit too tight, so I used some emery cloth to reduce the diameter slightly, and then the chimney pushed on very firmly, and pushing it onto the mandrel using the tailstock chuck. Now it's time to carefully clean up the damage to the top cap. At first I thought that the top cap of the chimney was made from copper. What I couldn't figure out was how the builder had managed to fit a copper top to the chimney where the join was invisible, but then the penny dropped. And here's the evidence. The top cap has been copper plated quite thickly and so the damaged part didn't really get much better because I was halfway through the copper coating. Maybe I should have a go to electroplating it with a piece of copper. 
But before that, I would like to show how I removed the mandrel from inside the chimney, like this. I used a piece of phosphor bronze bar, slightly smaller than the diameter of the chimney, and a heavy copper-faced hammer. At all times I held the chimney casting firmly in my hand, and in no time at all it was removed, completely undamaged. After removing the chimney from the mandrel, I cleaned it up using my polishing spindle, followed by some brasso wadding. Then I finally polished it up with a piece of cloth. It looks okay, but you can still see the marks. I think as an experiment, I will have a go at electroplating and just see how it comes out. But before I do that, I will have to remove all of the copper plating from the top side of the top cap. And for that, I'll need to use the mandrel one more time. I shot this video on the 11th of February, and I had to cut it short because I needed to go and get my COVID-19 injection. And I must say, I was completely impressed by the management of this. It was really brilliant. It was almost like a military operation. And so far, I haven't had any side effects, not even any pain from the injection. And that concludes this part of the rebuild. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.